Hello, my name is Jean and I'd like to welcome you to my garden here in Edinburgh. In my last two videos on garden design, we've looked at the steps that you would take to plan your garden. But we haven't looked beyond the practicalities yet. We haven't thought about the style, the looks and the beauty of your garden. This is such a personal thing. And if you don't have a good idea of the style that you like, this can appear to be a real stumbling block. When I started with my blank canvas over 30 years ago, I had a pretty good idea of the styles I liked and of the styles that I didn't like. Remember, this was in the days before the internet. Despite the amazing amount of information available on the internet, I still think that browsing through garden design books is a very useful activity. And the more designs you can see, the more able you will be to formulate your own individual style. Another very useful activity is to watch some of the garden programs on television that particularly feature garden design. One of the best for this purpose is Garden Rescue. On each program there will be two designs drawn up and the designers will explain how they've tried to accommodate the needs of the individual owners. It's really very interesting to hear why they've positioned things in the places that they have. In my last video I suggested visiting other people's gardens, both private and public as well as noting some of the good ideas that you might want to incorporate into your garden, you can also identify the things that you really don't want to have in your garden. And it's so useful in building up an idea of your own style. If you expose yourself to enough different ideas, you begin to build up a picture of what you would like. And this will help you draw up the design that's right for you. And as always, step back frequently to review what you've done and to see where you might want to change things. There are many styles of garden, but if you're new to gardening, it might simplify things if we look, look at a few different styles. And I'm going to have a look at formal, traditional, cottage and contemporary gardens. Formal gardens are perhaps the easiest to recognise with their very clear structure, often provided by clipped box hedging, geometric shapes and symmetrical layout. Planting is often quite restrained and uses a restricted colour palette. Traditional gardens usually have a green manicured expanse of lawn with flower beds or borders and well-defined paths, either straight or curved. However, they lack the very precise structure of formal gardens. There may be repetition of plantings, and symmetrical plantings either side of a path. Cottage gardens, on the other hand, tend to be quite informal, with plants spilling onto paths, over fences and up walls. Traditionally, cottage gardens had ornamental plants randomly mixed with edible and medicinal plants, and there would be very little earth visible. Materials used for paths, fences, etc. would be made from natural materials. Modern gardens usually have a clean, minimalist look achieved by using contemporary, versatile and inexpensive materials like metal, resin and precast concrete. Water features will have clean lines and geometric shapes. The design and the planting will have a dramatic architectural feel and may make use of a restricted colour palette. But in truth, many suburban gardens have designed features from more than one style of garden. My own garden was designed round a roughly circular lawn with bits off it, because I like the centre to be open. It has changed a little over the years, but the basic design remains the same. Some people prefer having what are described as garden rooms. Interconnected areas that divide up the garden so you only ever see a small part at a time. This can be very effective, but it might be less successful in a small garden. Although I like the centre of the garden to be open, I did screen off part of the garden so that the fruit and vegetable patch were mostly hidden from view, and also to introduce an element of surprise. 
Because I aim for an informal look, the planting areas are not narrow linear borders, but areas of varying width and curving edges. Wider beds show off your planting to better effect, as you can mix a greater variety of plants that flower at different times. If you have quite a small garden, you might prefer to have some carefully chosen slabs and gravel rather than grass. I'm not a fan of artificial grass, but it has improved immensely over recent years. And in some circumstances, it might fit your needs perfectly. I do hope that these videos have helped you to establish the look that you're aiming for in your garden. And I hope that you've been able to actually create that look. In my next video, we're going to have a look at setting about planting, how to choose the plants that you want and how to position them. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.